If you love to create digitally, be a star, or direct the next big film, then enroll in the Broadcast Media program at ATC. This is a 10-month, 8-credit program that introduces students to the television, radio, film, and live event broadcast industry. Uh, the Broadcast Media program prepares students for uh, work placement in the broadcasting field. That could be radio, TV, uh, internet, in terms of anything media related. Um, students here get the uh, nice feel of both uh, hands-on and theory. Um, the hands-on, of course, being real live events. We actually do here, not just play events. We actually do things that um, give them the chance to do something that people will view and be able to watch. This state-of-the-art facility has a control room, green screen studio, radio room, and a computer lab with all the Adobe softwares to help you become a media star. Uh, the equipment that we have here at the Broadcast Media Program is industry standard equipment that uh, companies such as Dome Productions or TSN, uh, CBC News, as well as Global TV all use in their daily work. It's actually a great opportunity for students to use industry standard equipment uh, while they're in high school here. Uh, it gives them a great opportunity so that after high school they know uh, the kind of equipment that they'll be using in the industry if they choose to pursue this. Students will learn all aspects of the broadcasting field. They will do this with theory and hands-on learning. ATC's Broadcast Media program gives students a real-life experience by producing videos for nonprofit organizations, broadcasting on LRSD Radio, the school's online radio station, or by streaming live sporting events with multiple cameras, instant replay, hosts, and state-of-the-art graphics. The Broadcast Media program has taught me a lot of skills such as editing, producing, directing, camera operating, and graphics, and it's been like a, one great experience and it's helped me improve what I need to learn for this industry. In January, the students are sent out for work placement, an essential and vital step to completing the course. If you want to learn more about the program, check out our website at lratc.ca or lrsd.tv. You can also simply contact us by phoning 204-237-8951. The Culinary Arts Program at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center is an experience like no other. The course will expose you to all introductory aspects of the food service industry. You'll have the chance to plan and prepare meals, cook meats and poultry, prepare salads and vegetables, as well as acquiring the skills and techniques to hone you into the chef you want to be. You get to work in an environment that greatly resembles the food service industry. With tools and equipment that match industry standard, you'll have the best experience possible. You'll also have the opportunity to learn hands-on alongside certified chefs who are both as passionate and excited about the culinary arts as you are. Near the end of the program, ATC is sure to offer its students quality work experience to add to their resume. ATC's Culinary Arts Program is Level 1 accredited by Apprenticeship Manitoba, which means you'll be ready for whatever's your next step. If you're thinking about pursuing a career in the culinary arts, don't hesitate to visit lradc.ca for more information or call 204-237-8951. Do you want a rewarding career where the work is varied and there's never a dull moment? Imagine yourself using the latest diagnostic scan tools, repair computer software, and the newest tools and equipment while learning to diagnose and repair vehicles. ATC's Automotive Technology Program is your first step. ATC learn the various systems on a vehicle. They learn the fundamentals of braking systems, steering and suspension, drive lines, and we do that in theory in a classroom. We do that in a lab, which is a more controlled environment where we can apply some of those concepts, and then in a live shop environment. ATC has a 
fully equipped 12 bay shop as well as a lab and a classroom. Our facility is equipped with the latest in diagnostic software and equipment. Our tools and equipment in our shop are similar to what you'd find in industry. One of the things that's unique to ATC is the amount of time that students spend in our programs and as a result it's sort of a very collaborative environment and teachers and students learn to work together. Students at ATC finish the program with a four-week work practicum where they get to apply the concepts that they've learned here in a real work environment. Students who successfully complete our program go on to work in dealerships, independent repair facilities, um, and they're not limited to just that. Some of them take those skills and transfer them into heavy duty, um, highway trucks and that kind of stuff as well. So if you have a passion for cars and you want to work in a fast-paced, cutting-edge industry, this is the place for you. <laughs> Do you have an interest in developing our youth? Do you enjoy working with kids? If so, the Early Childhood Education Program at Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center is the place for you. Students in the ECE program here at ATC will learn how to communicate effectively with children. They learn how to guide them in positive ways. They learn how to plan activities that are developmentally appropriate. And they, most importantly, learn how to play with children and engage them in play. This is an eight credit program which is designed to prepare students who have an interest in early childhood development and to prepare students for employment in child care centers. They're out at work experience two days a week at, at children's centers and they really get to experience hands-on what it would be like working in a daycare environment for a full day for five days a week. Early childhood education here at ATC focuses heavily on the Manitoba 9 essential skills for work education, which will help students be more successful and the highest chance of work placement after graduation. In the class it's more books and you see with your eyes, but when you go into the center and you actually interact with children, it's definitely an eye-opening because you definitely put everything like you learn in books and hands-on and in experience. It's really fun, I really enjoy that because in class, you hear a lot of stuff and you learn a lot of stuff, but when you go out into the daycare, then you get to actually experience it and put what you learned in class like into play. When you graduate from ATC, you'll actually like know what to do with children. And it's not only like reading books and, and all that stuff, you actually go in and interact and learn how to behave around children and around adults. Students who have successfully completed the program may find employment in after-school programs, preschool, or daycares. The best thing is the amount of time we get with the kids. The classroom is very comforting. Um, it has a very like homey feeling. Don't miss out on this exciting career as you will be a big part of our community's future.
field. That could be radio, TV, uh, internet, in terms of anything media related. Um, students here get the a nice feel of both uh, hands-on and theory. Um, the hands-on, of course, being real live events we actually do here, not just play events. We actually do things that um, give them the chance to do something that people will view and be able to watch. This state-of-the-art facility has a control room, green screen studio, radio room, and a computer lab with all the Adobe softwares to help you become a media star. Uh, the equipment that we have here, the broadcast media program, is industry standard equipment that uh, companies such as Dome Productions or TSN, uh, CBC News, as well as Global TV, all use in their daily work. It's actually a great opportunity for students to use industry standard equipment uh, while they're in high school here. Uh, it gives them a great opportunity so that after high school they know uh, the kind of equipment that they'll be using in the industry if they choose to pursue this. Students will learn all aspects of the broadcasting field. They will do this with theory and hands-on learning. ATC's broadcast media program gives students a real-life experience by producing videos for nonprofit organizations, broadcasting on LRSD Radio, the school's online radio station, or by streaming live sporting events with multiple cameras, instant replay, hosts, and state-of-the-art graphics. The broadcast media program has taught me a lot of skills such as editing, producing, directing, camera operating, and graphics, and it's been like a, one great experience and it's helped me improve what I need to learn for this industry. In January, the students are sent out for work placement, an essential and vital step to completing the course. If you want to learn more about the program, check out our website at lratc.ca or lrsd.tv. You can also simply contact us by phoning 204-237-8951.
set now off site. You need to have a touchdown. He throws down in the middle and complete to the play. James, tonight we get to the we get a rematch of last year's game, where the St. Paul's last year St. Paul's beat Sturgeon Heights Huskies 4-1. So now you know that Sturgeon Heights is looking for a, a re redemption from last year's game. St. Paul's has been in the this is St. Paul's fourth straight year in the provincial finals. Then this is they won the last three years. So you know that so they're looking for the ninth provincial championship win. The player to look out for is Carter Hoon, who has scored 14 points and 17 assists, scored in his entire season, leading his team with 31 points. Another player to look out for is Chad Harrison, the goalie with a 1.34 goals against average and four sh three shutout games this season. The St. Paul's Crusaders, to get here, had to beat the Garden City Gulf Fighting Gophers 3 to 2 and the uh, Nipawa Tigers 6-0. In the semi-final semi-games, they beat the Garden Valley Zodiacs 3-0. I actually got a chance to talk to the, one, the head coach, Andrew Harder, about tonight's game and on his team. Final, how does it feel? It feels very good, yeah. It's a testament to all the great uh, work that we've done all year. Uh, Myself and all the assistants and, I still doing my thing? and the players are putting in a ton of work. I think they are. How big of an accomplishment would it be with being the first Manitoba team to win four provincial championships in a row in hockey? <laughs> I didn't know that. That would be uh, really, really special. Absolutely, for sure. What will be your main focus in coming to tonight's provincial game? Our main focus is just to continue doing what, what got us here, uh, to stay positive, to work as hard as we possibly can to take as few penalties as we can. Um, Sturgeon has a very, very lethal power play. So if we can take as, uh, as few penalties as we can would be, would be key. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good day, good, good game. Two key players tonight are number 19, Brian Osterman, who has 30 goals. Bring the mic, bring the mic, bring the mic. Oh, number 19, Ryan Osterman, who has 30 goals this regular season and six goals in the postseason. I'll ask you a few questions. What are you gonna do to come up on top this year? Uh, well, it's no secret that it's a big game. Uh, it's a 50-minute hockey game for provincial championships. So, uh, essentially, our guys have got to bring everything they've got and sell out tonight. And in games like this, where it's uh, a best of one, you gotta hope for a few bounces. But uh, we know that team well, and they know us well. So it's gonna be who wants it more tonight. What's been your strength so far this year? Uh, we have a really well-rounded team. I think we have very strong goaltending this year. Our forwards have been potent at various times of the season, specifically in playoffs. And our, our defense have been a pleasant surprise. We've had a lot of young guys that have really stepped up, uh, especially in the last week when we've been a little short. So uh, we bring a well-rounded team, but against a team like St. Paul's, who skates so well and, and has a lot of depth, uh, every single guy's got to play their role tonight. Have you done any scouting for tonight's game? I don't think there's any reason to go scout. We played these guys so many times this year. They know us, we know them. Now it's a matter of going out there, go head to head, and who wants it more? Big game. You see where the chips lie. All right. Thanks, Coach. I'm Evan from LRC TV. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 19, 2019 Milk 4A Provincial High School Hockey Championships. 
Coming to you live from the Canadian Tire Rink at the MTS Iceplex here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're just about to get underway with the Sturgeon Heights Huskies taking on the St. Paul's Crusaders in what's a repeat of last year's Provincial Champions Championship. I'm Grant McManus. I'll be doing the color. And joining me tonight is Guy Anderson doing the play-by-play. -play. Play -play. We'll switch it around. We'll so anyways, <laughs> uh, welcome, Guy. And Thanks a lot, uh, we're Grant. just about to get underway. Pleasure to be here. So your starting lineup for St. Paul's Crusaders in net, number one, Chad Harrison, number eight, Ethan Lewis on defense, number 11, Owen Osterman, number 15, Neil Kimeni, Kimeni, Adam Christie Stewart, rounded out by Ian McDonnell. St. Paul's early possession here, get started. Kimeni working down low on the boards. Puck comes around. That's Sluchuk advancing it up. St. Paul's D moves it up the boards. St. Paul's clears that back out. Gibbs on defense, plays that back up to his teammate. Teams will be looking to get a little bit of contact, get their feet settled in, get their nerves settled here. Get the guy as they uh, get started this one. Whoa. One time take all championship. There's an example of it there where Ian McDonnell Big hit. just lit up Osterman from Sturgeon. Ryan Osterman is just gathering his bearings there. He'll get to the bench. Coaches will keep an eye on him. Hopefully he can uh, that was a hard get, hit. get reset. Great open ice hit there by McDonnell. McDonnell. St. Paul's wins the draw, circle back behind the net. Outlet pass coming up the left boards. Pass is dump, dumped in. Great That's play by Gilbert there to move the puck. Yeah. Shot deflected wide, still no shots on net for either team to start this provincial championship. As we said, this is a winner take all, one game for the provincial championships. Gilbert's in the right spot. He took that one right off the top of the helmet off that point shot. Fully screened, but uh, positioning was key there. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't whistle that one down. Yeah. St. Paul's on the cycle here. They move the puck out. Pinching in, that's number six, Travis Deck. Keeps the play alive. Still good work. Sawchuck. And that's Cole Lysak. And we've got an offside. So a, little bit of, yeah, a little bit of back and forth. St. Paul's maybe with uh, a little bit of advantage, but uh, not really anything uh, to speak of at this point. Typical first few minutes. Everybody's filling each other out here. Yeah. So as I said, this is a repeat of last year's provincial final. Sturgeon will be looking for uh, an answer to last year's provincial championships. They were successful in winning the, the City League this year in a, uh, a win over Garden City Gophers. Sturgeon advanced to this provincial final by defeating Garden City, who they played in the City Finals, in a uh, shootout overtime win. That Great breakout all started with Gilbert at the back playing that puck, yeah. you know, around his deep. Poilet with a good push. He was the uh, he was the star of that shootout. It went two Saturday. rounds. Yeah, on Saturday to advance to the the winner. He got the overtime winner in the shootout. So he's looking to make his mark here early in the provincial championship. A little bit of a fan. The goalie's lost his stick. Another Sturgeon player comes up slow. He's looking to make his way to the bench. Just looking for his number on here. That's number 17. That's Funk. Noah Funk. So a that's, bit of pain. Yeah, so that's uh, two Sturgeon players who have had uh, to go to the bench trying to catch their wits about them. Bodies are flying. Yeah. Sawchuk dumps the puck in deep. Puck gets rimmed to rack around. D to D. Udall with a shot on net from outside the blue line. Harrison takes that one easy. 
St. Paul's yet to register a shot on goal, other than that yeah. hit in the head, but I guess that was going over the net. Yeah. <laughs> so we have another uh, offside here, so just outside the St. Paul's line. Lots of hockey going on here this weekend. Absolutely. This is, uh, this is a fun time of year to be a high school student athlete. We've got... Uh, it's week, I should say. <laughs> yeah, we've got the provincial final here. We've got uh, the girls... Finals. Playing finals uh, taking part here. We've got basketball finals, uh, JV 4A finals tomorrow night at the Investors Group Center. The varsity basketball final fours for the varsity girls on Thursday night. There's Gilbert playing that puck out. Again, he looks to be uh, fairly handy and adept with uh, handling the puck back there. So yeah, it's a big that's, asset. That's for sure. It's quarterback and back there. Yeah. Have you seen Osterman back for Sturgeon? No, I have not. There's uh, one player on the bench without his helmet on. I'm yeah, not sure that could be him. that. I think that's Osterman there. Yeah. He's just getting his lid back on there now. So looked like uh, he maybe took a bit of the cage uh, to the chin. So yeah. Gould plays that one back to Gilbert. Plays that off into the corner. Good. Gets, heads up there. Play by Sturgeon player to step out of the St. Paul's tracks. And that's our first icing call. So we've got a deep defensive. Gilbert, uh, number eight in the Suns Provincial Poll, uh, living up to his billing. The only goalie in the top ten. Yeah, that's, uh, that's impressive. There's some high energy uh, octane players in that top ten. So to have a goalie, uh, that's good to see. Yeah. We have the number one player uh, in the coaches poll in this game, and that's... Oster, that's uh, Ryan Osterman. Ryan Osterman from Sturgeon Heights. His teammate, Owen Onegi, uh, unfortunately not playing in this. He took a match penalty in the early rounds of the Provincials. So, uh, you know, he's here as a good teammate, hoping his uh, Sitting husky down just team, in front of us. Yeah, hoping his Husky teammates can bring this one home. He's had a tough time for Provincial Championships. He played in the final last year, but it was just coming back off uh, getting shook, shook up in the uh, in the city final. So good cross ice pass there by Sturgeon, dump in there by Sykes. He puts pressure on Deck on the defenseman. Deck's off the board. Shot wide there by. Cadu for the Huskies. Oh, first penalty. Yeah. You know Gibbs stands. Oh, Osterman's back out there. That's a good sign. We always want these uh, high school athletes to be able to bounce back and uh, finish off their career here. So, yeah. Looks like we've got number 18 for Sturgeon Heights Huskies. That's number 18, as I said. Dylan Morton. Dylan Morton. In the penalty box for cross check, I believe. So, first advantage for St. Paul's here. 9:33 left in this 15-minute first period with the power play. A little bit of a scramble draw, but they do come up with possession off it. Shots blocked in front. Toilet. He's got a one-on-one. -on -one. He'll be just looking to get the puck on net, which he does. Harrison plays out, want to keep the puck alive, trying to take advantage and getting the off. St. Paul's looking to gain possession here. He got the puck down in the corner, looking for the defenseman cross ice pass. Great play by Sturgeon to cut that pass off. Yeah, that was uh, Zach Greenwood. Yeah, Ethan Lewis. Back on the point, team captain for St. Paul's. Again, Greenwood with the partial block, steers that one wide. He's going to get a chance to clear the puck. We've got a great interactive crowd in front of us here, guy. We've yeah. got uh, the Sturgeon, <laughs> Sturgeon Heights student body right in front of us. So, and we'll St. Paul's on the other ourselves. side. Yeah, so we're just getting used to the volume here and the excitement, but uh, this is what high school athlete, athletics is all about, folks. And they're, they're still flowing in. Yes. I expect it'll be uh, a near capacity crowd by the time everybody gets settled in. So we've got some four and four action here for a minute. 
So Wasserman taking the draw for the Huskies in the St. Paul zone. Puck gets dumped out. Udall plays it back over to his D partner. They're still on the penalty kill. Nice clean possession here. They're looking to get the puck deep. A little bit of reflection there. Great play by St. Paul's defenseman to block that shot. Udall keeps that one in. And a chance. there's Kimini. Harrison, looks like that one going off his uh, like left shoulder. Got his shoulder on it, yeah. yeah. And Osterman, the way he goes. Circles back. Yeah. A little better puck position, both for the, the PK and the power play on both sides here. Both teams getting settled in. Coming up to close boards, that was McDonnell dumping that one in. There's a chance for St. Paul's. That deflection just wide. Husky's got a power play here for 45 seconds. Awesome and looking to take that one down the wing. Puck gets flipped out. Nice play at center ice by Gibbs, the defenseman. He looks to get the puck in. A little oh. bit of a dangle there. Oh, big save there by good Harrison. Big save by Harrison. Wasn't quite sure where it was. Nope. That was a great play by Gibbs. Looking like Tyler Myers going in there. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, big range of defensemen. First real good scoring opportunity by the Huskies. So They'll look to build off that and build some momentum here with 6.45 left in this first period of the Milk 4A Provincial Hockey Championships. we got no height stats on these guys, but uh, Gibbs is a tall drink of water. I'm yeah, if we look at uh, Ryan Osterman, no, even in the top 10, nothing's listed there. So uh, you know, anything over 5'10 for me is tall guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Gibbs is probably a 6-4 ring. Yeah. 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 Good pressure down the boards behind. St. Paul's kicks it forward. It comes back to Gibbs. Ooh. He'll want that shot back. Broke his stick yeah, on it. He needs like a new it. twig. Uh -oh. He's trying to get back and play some defense on his knees. Oh. Oh, rings it off the iron. That's uh, Jack, Jack Kaiser. Kaiser. And they come for more. St. Paul's. A big save by yeah. Albert. They're buzzing now. Yeah, they've got some good possession here. Kaiser again, able to keep that one in. Goes deep corner. Sturgeon looks to dump that one down. Oh. Some heavy thumping down in the corners I here. Think they got, I think they got St. Paul's for too many. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was uh, just a heads up play by Sturgeon. Oh, we got an interference play. Oh, okay. Yeah, down in the corner, I think behind the play so I'm not sure if uh, the men's high school league if they normally play with two officials or it's a three man crew for league games I think this will be the first time where they're playing with well other than uh, with a four man crew so sometimes that comes a uh, play in factor sometimes where they may get away with something behind the scenes That's there's right. an extra set yeah. of eyes here in the ice for these That's young guys right. behind the play but yeah now they got that guy back there watching. Yeah, it's like the uh, the basketball when they go to the three-man crews or three-person <laughs> crews for basketball. Right. Right, just not uh, what not they're getting away with to. No. Not getting away with too much. So Sturgeon goes to their second power play of the night. Puck deep in St. Paul's end. They're out shooting the Crusaders 5-3 right now, but nothing to show for it. Osterman moves back. Uh, good block there by Gilbert. Harrison. My mistake. And St. Paul's dumps the puck down. That's number 13 for Sturgeon. Ethan Udall. Where are you going? Osterman. Osterman circles back. Not quite liking what he's uh, seeing right now. Udall dumps that puck in deep. Huskies look for a wholesale change. Close to getting the uh, too many men, too many men yeah. too. So that's uh, both teams have been flirting with danger oh. there. 
Sykes with the... Uh, Ooh, oh, that almost squeezed yeah. between the five hole. Harrison just squeezed, squeezed the pad. Squeezed them, so you can appreciate uh, what the goalies are going through, guy, in this uh, provincial final here. Yeah, um, I'm sure you know nerves were uh, there until they get that first couple of shots, but they'll they'll be into it now and yeah. focusing on the play. And Harrison gets the start for uh, St. Paul's, both him and. Uh, loss and it was actually loss in the plate in the semifinal. So uh, Coach Harder's been uh, back and forth. I talked to uh, the convener Kevin Landerville from uh, St. John's Ravenscourt. He said Harrison did have a good uh, uh, quarterfinal. So okay, but uh, that's nice know. to have a one-two punch oh like that. That sure is. Oh, that's awesome two uh, shot from the point. Yeah. Awesome and holding off the pressure there by number 29 for St. Paul's. That's Michael Panchek. Oh, that oh, just that was uh, that was a quality shot. Yeah. No a full, full screen one there on. Yeah, good play there by the D to block that one coming out of the corner. Sluchuk falls on the blue line, but they're able to keep it alive. Funk dumps that one back down into the corner. Ball comes back. Puck comes back out to Sluchuk. Nice quick shot, yeah. block in front. Yeah, Sturz is starting to move the puck well around. Great job there by Gordon to keep the puck in. It was a close one. Yeah. <laughs> Fans in front of us and the Crusaders don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Three thirty-eight left. No one's bent the twine yet here, guys, so uh, we're in a 0-0 tie here in the Provincial Championship. Udall dumps that one in. Puck comes up oh. the boards. Been some heavy thumping going on. No surprise, we've got uh, 16, 17, 18-year-old uh, yeah. high school boys uh, in a Provincial Championship. They're not going to leave anything on the ice tonight. Luckily, they don't have the delay of game penalty there because it looked like the defense for St. Paul's cleared that over the, over the glass. Yes. D to D are on the back end. St. Paul's high off the glass into Husky's end. That's Cadu deep in the corner. He comes out with the puck. Doing a good job of keeping the skates. Udall's getting lots of ice time here for the Huskies on the D. He's uh, steady on the back end. Deck kicks it into the corner. St. Paul's tries to skate that one out front. Here goes Sykes for the, uh, oh, there's another thundering hit. That's three this game already. He's another one that's going to have to take a blow on the bench. So uh, St. Paul's. I think it was Meyer. Hard to see their jerseys when they're tucked in. Yeah. Yeah. Adrenaline testosterone. Yes. Potent combination. Morden trying to pull that one back inside. Defense plays that one well. Good interference call. We've got another interference call, yep. I'd imagine. We got a lot of pointing here. Yeah, we've got both officials. Uh, I think they just landed three, three planes at the airport. <laughs> but uh, hopefully they get the call right. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, Husky went down, but there's a Husky going in the penalty box. Oh, there's a oh we've got uh, offsetting here. Offsetting. Interesting. So Huskies with the balance of shots, 9-3, but still nothing to show for. No. It. They've had a couple of good looks, a couple of near misses. Yeah, if they were handing out provincial championships for uh, thundering body checks, the trophy would be heading <laughs> uh, St. Paul's way. Yeah, so, that's for sure. Uh, hopefully we can get the, uh, the, the, the Huskies. Good thing uh, Austin is back. Hopefully our mics aren't picking up all the crowd noise here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. High school kids are pretty excited. Yeah. So Sykes taking the draw here against Duncan. Matt Duncan for St. Paul. So we'll have a repeat of that. Harrison. Yeah. You got, you got a good view of that.
Gibson uh, Sluchuk on the point for Huskies. Gibbs has had a great off scoring opportunity already this game, so they'll be looking to get the puck back there. They're going to have to reset now. The puck play can go in. Sykes pursues the puck behind the net. Gibbs stands up his man at the, uh, at the blue line. That's number 11. That's Owen Osterman for St. Paul. So... Both Ostermans taking big hits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. One for each side. And yes, they are uh, related, folks. Shot from the left side there. Huskies getting a lot of blocks in. Yeah. Helping out Gilbert. Been impressed with uh, the presence of Morden by Sturgeon over there. Yes. Very patient with the puck. Yep. And Lewis taking a good trench along the boards there. Hits starting to even themselves out here in the late lap, last minute of the first period. Yep. Ethan Lewis with the uh, shot on net from St. Paul's. Good job over there on the far point by Deck to keep that one alive. 38 seconds left in the first period. Butel trying to go eye off the glass. Lewis keeps that one along. Hoylet unable to keep it in. Udall passes that one up. 25 seconds left in the period, so they'll just be looking to control the puck and go into the first period break with a 0-0 tie. Good work along the boards. Gilbert playing that puck up again. Yeah. Good one-touch pass there by St. Paul's, but uh, well done by Greenwood to uh, interrupt that in the neutral zone. Awesome <laughs> and slides around. Well, we're a full period into our 4A Milk Provincial Hockey Championship here from the Iceplex in Winnipeg, Manitoba. 0-0 tie between the St. Paul's Crusaders and the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Your thoughts on the first period, Guy? Um, a lot of individual stuff at the beginning. They're starting to settle in and, uh, you know, get some more play, play with each other. Um, typical, though, of... Uh, you know, trying to trying to set the tone. A lot of bodies flying around. Yeah. A lot of a lot of aggressive play, and, and it, sometimes to the point of forgetting to play hockey completely. Yeah. Um, and going overboard with that. So we'll see who uh, starts to get away from the hitting and, and starts to uh, try and make the plays with their sticks and heads instead of their shoulders. And there's been some specialty team plays. Both teams have had been on the power play. Uh, Three times, I think. We just finished uh, coincidental minors. So, Great. Um, neither team really getting an advantage uh, on the power play. So, again, they'll be looking to take advantage. And I would think the coaches will be just, you know, okay, now we've got the first period under our legs, boys. Now we've got to settle in, play our systems. Yeah. Right? Do what we yeah. know how to do and do it well. Yeah. That's what I expect to see here in the second. A yeah. bit more playing hockey. Osterman uh, for the Sturgeon Height. He's over there. Uh, getting some first aid attention. So I think in that uh, first hit in the opening minute, I think it's probably Cage opened his chin up, so he's just kind of get, trying to get it cleaned up. Okay. Yeah, that was a, that was a big, big high hit. And uh, yeah. So we're back at five on five, even strength. We're uh, quick transition here. They'll clean the ice between the second and thirds, but we're underway here for the next 15 minutes. Offside from St. Paul's. Yeah. Yeah, neither team will want to give an edge uh, at this point in the game. In a one-game series, you know, you almost you can almost imagine they want to play a little tentative and not uh, be the one to make that mistake to give the other team an advantage. Right. A little right. different uh, mindset going into a best of three. That's correct. Yeah. One game winner take all. Yeah. A little bit Gould more nervous that one. making that play. Yeah. Nice smooth skater by Morton. Ducks have the defense in there. Slide shot, great call by the linesman, right yeah. on. Yeah. That looked like he had it, but uh, his feet were still out the line. And Gould got caught inside, chasing that puck down. 
Great crowd here for this provincial championship. We've got standing room along the boards. We've got a pretty good yeah, representation, representation from both, uh, both school sides. So uh, really good to see. And if I'm correct, the Sturgeon Heights girls are also playing tonight. They are. They'll be on. Uh, they'll be on one of the other rinks right yep. now. I can't remember the, the name of the rink, but uh, last I checked, they were up two nothing in the first. They okay. scored on their first two shots. Wow. Against SJR. That's the Division Two final. Okay. Earlier, uh, St. Mary's beat um, Selkirk 4-1 in the Division One final first game. There's the smooth skating of uh, number 15, Leo uh, Neil. Kimini for St. Paul's Crusaders. Yeah, we see some better puck movement here now. Yeah. Interference for uh, collision in the center ice there. It was Osterman again. Yeah. You get the feeling that he's going to, you know, do something special here before this game's over. Yeah, and that's the uh, and that's the Osterman for Sturgeon. We haven't yet uh, called out Owen Osterman's name too much for uh, the Crusaders, the the number one uh, ranked player in the coaches' poll this year. So I'm not sure who's older out of the cousins, out of the Ostermans, but yeah. uh, great start by Brian Osterman for the for the Huskies. Yeah. I think if they were doing puck possession stats, uh, Ryan would be number one right now for sure. Yeah. Good job there by Juris on the board to keep that one in. Easy turn aside by Gilbert. Gilbert. There's the first deflection, so a little bit of a challenge, but he turns that one aside. Puck into the left corner. Sturgeon comes out, and oh, we're oh. going to have a... Penalty behind the play. Yeah, penalty behind the play. Oh, That's... Uh, Flash. Yeah. St. Paul's fans like that one. Crusaders have come out a little stronger this period. They've taken the first three shots on goal. Yeah, that's one you don't want to see when the puck's already out of the neutral zone and uh, way behind the play. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a that's a discipline. That's frustrating as yeah. a coach. That one. Yeah. So we'll see what St. Paul's can do here. They turn the puck back up top to Deck. He's going to control the play here. Back down into the corner to Kimini. Way over to the far side, looking for a shot. Shot right on net. Scramble in front of the net. Still digging away. Great job by Deck to keep that one in off the scramble from the net. Cross ice pass. Again, good screen offered there by Osterman, but Gilbert, Gilbert stand his ball. Yeah. yeah. And the shots have evened up 10-10. So St. Paul's now with the first five shots of this period. Turning it up a notch. Yeah. Helps to be on the power play, of course. Yeah, Owen Osterman uh, was parking it in the kitchen of Gilbert there, but uh, Gilbert was able to work his way around it and make the save. And more importantly, no rebound. Good oh. glove save there. Nice glove save. Yeah. Nice Quick shot from the hash. Yeah, so far uh, Gilbert showing why he's uh, in the top ten. That's right, yeah. Scramble draw, St. Paul's ends up coming out of that. Reverse it back to the point, down into the corner. Cross ice pass, no answer in this crease there. I've seen this power play before somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's Kimeni, oh, there's just, from the just from the opposite <laughs> side. Yeah, what's with all these left-handed shooters here? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Udall trying to tie up his man in the corner. Again, looking to feed that one in the center. Oh, oh. great glove hand there by Deck on the... Oh, nice, oh, nice dangle. Oh, oh, he dumps it! That's Ethan Lewis, the captain from St. Paul's. That's why he wears the three. A little roof daddy off the toe drag. Yeah. Beautiful move yep. around the D. Well, and that, that one was all saved by Deck on the defense with the high right. glove save. That's right, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Without getting called for the... Uh, Close the, the pass. Hand. Yeah. yeah, closing the hand no. on the puck. We don't have a rebound. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got uh, folks turned around wondering what the rebound, what, what the replay, replay was. We don't have a monitor in front of us, so we're going to trust the officials. But uh, great play by St. Paul's to keep that one alive. And then, yeah, yeah Roof Ethan Daddy. Lewis, toe drag to Roof Daddy. No chance for Gilbert on that one. Under the crossbar. Another high shot. St. Paul's keeps that one in. St. Paul's now with eight unanswered shots here in the second. Yeah. Sturgeon's had some chances to clear, but uh, just can't make it that little extra foot no, to get it out. There's they're on their heels line. right yeah. now. Yeah, St. Paul's has uh, just turned it up a little, another notch yeah. right now. Definitely buoyed by that goal. Yeah. I didn't. I don't think that was a power play. I think the power play was over already. I believe you're right. But nonetheless, St. Paul's had a uh, good puck to that. Oh, you know what? That. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I remember looking up the clock. There was still time left. Okay, so, it so that, that was play. a costly penalty yes. uh, to take right behind the play. Yeah. Gibbs tries to take his man out from under the behind the boards. He pins his guy on, but Gibbs. that's 33. Sam Mullet uh, keeping the puck alive. Good puck pressure there by St. Paul's, one on three. Sturgeon finally comes around, rims it around to Gold, see if he can keep it out. He was unable to keep the puck ahead. Here's oh, off Osherman again. That's two off of uh, off the Foley's head, so. <laughs> Harrison. Yeah. Oh, that was close to too many. Yeah. The defenseman left it, so there's no. Lines will wave that one off. So we've got the puck deep here, high off the glass. Duncalf, he'll be looking to make amends after uh, taking that penalty and uh, looking at it, looking at the St. Paul's goal from the sidelines. Yeah. Probably could have moved that puck a little bit earlier. Good work with his feet to keep that one alive. Boyle probably would have preferred to keep the puck on a stick there. There's Morden. Great block there by the defenseman. That's Ethan Lewis. Lewis, the captain. Kimini, very smooth skater for St. Paul's. Another block by Greenwood. So these players aren't uh, afraid to put it on the line here, guy, to no. block shots. They're leaving it all out there. Yeah. And the Huskies really been blocking a lot yeah great job with his feet there that's Morden again yeah very smooth he's looking for some support <laughs> he keeps it deep he uh, <laughs> avoided two St. Paul's players yeah. in that one had the radar going yeah. slide shot just can't keep that one in high dump in that's number two Tyler Sawchuck trying to oh, keep the puck in deep end and got a penalty Looks like the St. Paul's. St. Paul, yep. so they'll be looking for one. Tough there to pluck that one up around the crossbar. Yeah. Pretty heavy shot, though, by Gibbs so far. Yeah. So sure. we've mentioned a couple of the players that have been in the top ten. We've got a minute here as uh, players are getting reset. So the this is the Winnipeg Sun top ten. They do this for all sports. So at number one is Ryan Osterman out of uh, Sturgeon Heights. Number two, Caden Onegi, also from Sturgeon Heights. Number three... Alex uh, Lashevo from Garden City uh, Gophers. Ethan Lewis, St. Paul's captain at number four. Carson Winkler, number five from the River East Kodiaks. And we'll bring you the top, or the six through ten here in a minute. Osman up the boards. They've got the power play, so they'll be looking to get set up and gain possession. they got Osman, Hoylet, and Morton yep. out there. Slychuk. Good block there by number three. That's Van Norman. In front of the St. Paul's net. Austin is settling in at the point there. Quarterback in this. Yeah. Him and Morden playing back and forth. Looking to get that shot. Goes cross ice. Top corner. Good blocker save by St. Paul's goalie. And even better rebound. He pushed that out to the corner. Yeah. And now St. Paul's clears it down. St. Paul's makes a wholesale change on their penalty kill unit. Osserman. Awesome. 
going to make his way through. St. Paul's dumps the puck back down. 54 seconds left in this penalty kill. Hoylet, the shootout winner. First urgent. Unsuccessful. St. Paul's clears it back down again. Sturgeon not able to get anything sustained here on this penalty kill. No, they're, they're, they're really uh, depending on one guy yeah. to carry it all the way down right yeah, now. Yeah, and now we've got Lysak uh, one on two deep in the zone, but uh, killing valuable time on the penalty kill. Here we go again, Paul. Osterman trying to do it. Yeah. He gets it down. We'll try and set up again here. Yeah, he's got a guy back down in the corner. There he goes. That's Greenwood missing that one. Oh. Oh. Bit of a, maybe a penalty call. St. Paul's is looking oh, for Oh, here's the big there. rebound. Oh, great nice block, block there block. by Lewis. That's wow. what the captain does for yeah. you. And great hustle to get off the ice. He's gassed. Or not. <laughs> he wanted off, oh. but uh, <laughs> no one was ready to take his place. Yeah. The, the penalty was just over, and there's a bit of a mix-up at, mix, yeah. mix at the bench there. Funk keeps that one alive. Gets tied up in the middle of the zone, and Kimini sidesteps the body check by Gould. As well as one Lewis from finally Sawchuk. gets off the ice. Yeah. Long shift for him. Funk dumps one in, won't register a shot on net, but Harrison plays out into the corner. Meyer chasing Osterman down. Turns that one back. Gets nice his man in front of the net. Wow. Great read coming down the middle of the ice there by yeah. 17. That's Adam Christy Stewart. Great read by Osterman. Beauty pass. He just missed that corner. Yeah. Um, Christy Stewart. I'm just going to say, pretty wide open play. We haven't had a, a whistle in a while. We've got 521 here left in the second period. Yeah. St. Paul's Crusaders up. one Quick nothing. Game. On the goal by Ethan Lewis. Lewis, yeah, beauty, real nice goal. Yeah. No, that's not one that uh, Gilbert looked back on. Wish he could have that one back. No, that's uh, nothing he could do on that one. Winger didn't get that one tied up, and now it's a foot race. Plays that one into the middle. Look out! Yeah, they're oh! oh, yeah. looking to turn this one back. We got a two-on-two. Two. Greenwood, great job there by active stick by the St. Paul's defenseman. Davies off the glass to Greenwood. He just missed the pass. His teammate picks up his glove. Heard footsteps, I think. Yeah. There. Rightfully so. There's been uh, there's been some heavy bodies late. Oh yeah. Guys are keeping their heads up. Nice stick there in front. Yeah. That was a nice little uh, dish off there by uh, Hoylet. Yep. Oh, oh, another penalty coming oh, yeah. up to St. Paul's. Like a trip. Yep. The fans on our side like that one. I'm going to guess they're supporting the Huskies. <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. Grant. I think uh, you're right. The choir on the other side, not so much. Pretty quiet. Yeah. yeah. Some choice words, it looks like, from the bench. We yeah. hope you're enjoying the broadcast, folks. Uh, this broadcast is brought to you by the broadcast media course from the Louis Riel Arts and Tech Center under the leadership of Ken Plantick and Eduardo Lobo. These are uh, students that are learning the ins and outs of all aspects of the uh, media industry, so we're happy to, to be with them. They do a fantastic job. They sure do. This is my first uh, telecast, and oh, uh, it's been great. Yeah, great feed there by Gibbs. Gibbs, yeah, yeah. the point. More than... Uh, just missed the one-timer down Just low. missed the one-timer. <laughs> Huskies can't Lose, get yeah. anything sustained on this power play. No. They'd, they'd like to set up. Just looking at uh, Ethan Lewis here, the team captain and goal scorer for tonight. Not uh, a big physical presence, but uh, high skill level. Um, you know, big motor in him from what I've seen so far. Yeah, and, and he looks like he's got the smarts, right? Yeah. He's uh, yeah, held with he's, his hands. Uh, yeah, he's back there patrolling. 
Again, Sturgeon having a hard time to uh, gain, gain zone time. Yeah. Oh, here we go, a pass. Yeah. yeah. Right idea by Greenwood, but uh, they're just not, as a five-man unit, they get one guy deep and they just don't have the support, and St. Paul's is just outnumbering them. Yeah, they're on they that They turn puck the puck over and it's going the other way. Yeah. We're going to have to and then uh, there's passes like that. have like a talk between periods Yeah. readjust that power play. Gibbs again trying to uh, get the breakout pass. Hoylet unable to control that one. Shot on net. 14-13 in favor of St. Paul's. They're up 1-0. The result is some big hits and uh, probably go. being down 1-0, but it looks like St. Oh. Uh, Sturz has lost their legs a little bit. The pace is slow. Yeah. And that St. Paul's has killed off another penalty. Yeah. Again, another uh, morale five. booster for them. Yep. Ooh. Off the uh, netting down in the corner, so yep. we'll have a face-off here with 2.15 left in the second period of the Milk 4A Provincial High School Hockey Championships. I'd like to take a second to uh, thank the rest of my executive, uh, the Winnipeg Women's High School Hockey League, for giving me the chance to be here and to leave me of my duties over in the other rink. Well, we're glad they did. We're glad to have you along on your uh, maiden voyage here, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I always say uh, the kids do the hard work. Uh, we're just fortunate that we get the opportunity to roll in, put a headset on, and get front row seats. That's right. This is fun. Yeah. There's, uh, to me, there's evidence of, uh, you know, they're starting to feel the pressure of the big kits. Yep. You know, yep. real, here's a, here's wasn't real steps. keen on uh, playing that puck. No. See, yeah. another dish off by Morden. He saw. Yeah. He saw a maroon coming at him. It wasn't maroon five. No. <laughs> oh, a little bouncing puck there. Unfortunate for Lewis as he was coming down the lane. Gibbs again dumps that one off. No one there. You know, I don't think either coach is going to be real happy with the uh, the play of their teams. No, as it far hasn't as been the, real not clean. Not a lot of flow, yeah. right? Yeah. So they got 119, and then they can get in while they uh, get the ice clean, get, uh, get everything sorted get off out. their leg, get things sorted out, and uh, get back here for the final period. Should be an interesting one. I think so. Yeah, not a lot of clean tape-to-tape -tape passes. You know, chips off the boards. Guys yep. are looking down yep. on their skates. Well, um, and with his head hit, hitting, they're, <laughs> yeah. get, they're getting rid of the puck quick, and they're not really, yeah. they don't really care about where they're getting rid of, no. rid of to. Like they're just There's Kaiser deep in the corner here. Good possession. Tanchuk dragging it down along the boards behind the net. You all rid him, rode him out in the boards. Yeah. Again, Lewis cuts that one off like he's playing free safety. <laughs> and look at he's he's going in to put pressure on. Yeah. I guess he's got the green light to do that when he's yeah. got the chance coming from the back yeah. end. Oh, avoids yeah. a hit. Oh yeah. Tight angle shot. Yeah, tries the uh, the rebound Sneak to make sure there. that uh, the goalie's got his stick in the right spot. That's right. And the that's Tanchuk dumps that one back in. Yeah, we've got 17 seconds left. Oh, and we've got an icing call. Not sure so what you was thinking there. Yeah, St. Paul's has got another deep zone offensive faceoff here with 13.7 seconds left in the second period. And uh, some tired guys out there for the Huskies. Yes. So St. Paul's can take advantage of that. Well, we'll see what kind of job Kimini can do on the draw. He's up against Greenwood. Oh, Greenwood no. wins it. Yeah. Right to Udall. Great review. Udall is just trying yeah, to kill it here. He's just trying to drag it along the boards, kill the clock. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was dangerous. Not sure. That uh, was a uh, great shot attempt by number six, Travis Deck. He's done a great job on the blue line, keeping plays in, and that was a yeah. that was a quality shot to end the period. So it's uh, one nothing. St. Paul's Crusaders here. The teams are going to the dressing rooms, like Guy said. They'll try to get reset and uh, try and get a little bit more flow here coming out in the third period. All right.
right, our hosts are going to uh, interview one of the coaches, so stay with us, folks. If you happen to step away for the break, uh, we hope you come back to join us in the third period. It should be a good one, folks. Again, we'll uh, and here we go. We got the interview of, I believe, the St. Paul's coach. So we'll throw it down. I'm here with Coach Hader of the St. Paul's Cruise Leaders. Coach, you're ahead of this in the first two periods. What has been the key, get, key point for you this game? Well, it's a really close game right now, so it's really fast tempo, so we're going to have to make sure that we uh, lock it down in the third period here. What will you do, do you need to improve to keep up this lead? We just have to keep working as hard as we can, and we gotta we got to stay out of the penalty box. We took a couple too many penalties there, so hopefully we can clean it up in the third. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you very much.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2019 Milk 4A Provincial High School Hockey Championship. We're just heading into the third period. It's St. Paul's Crusaders up 1-0 over the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. It's been a bit of a scrappy game, not meaning uh, fights, but just not real clean possession. I'm uh, Grant McManus, and I'll turn it over to uh, Guy Anderson here just to give us a little bit of a recap, Guy. Yeah, not a lot of flow, Grant. Uh, first, first period, Huskies... Uh, had the balance they outshot uh, St. Paul's 10 to 5 and then uh, St. Paul's turned it around the second and outshot them 10 to 3. Um, managed to get one a beautiful goal by Lewis uh, but yeah a lot of a lot of hitting and you see like you s said in the, in the second period that uh, yeah. guys are shying off of pucks because of that they got their heads up and they're looking to get rid of the puck quick but we'll see what happens here you know Crusaders are up one and uh, this is going to be a good 20 minutes of hockey here I think. Yeah, they'll, uh, again, in these uh, one-game take-all, they'll uh, be laying it on the line uh, to try and finish it off. But certainly a uh, highlight is uh, Noah, G Noah Gilbert in net for uh, Sturgeon Heights Huskies. There's a reason why he's in the coach's top ten poll. He's uh, probably been keeping them in that uh, one nothing. That's right. And, you know, he's been able to play the puck behind the net, uh, keep things moving and helping his defense yeah. out back there. Yeah, the one... Uh, the one goal that was scored was a, a power play goal. It was uh, perhaps an unfortunate uh, thought process by the Sturgeon Heights Huskies player. He took a penalty behind the play a there. Yeah, behind the play, slashing. Yeah, so he knew and it on his way to the uh, the penalty box. He was uh, upset with himself. Yeah. Again, maybe that uh, I mean that second. Uh, referee in there behind the play right well, that's it as we were talking earlier in the game uh we're in a four-man crew here so with the extra set of eyes they've done a good job i think they've kept uh, the game under control there's been some big hits yep i think they've called the penalties they've been fair yep and it's been consistent so no, it's, that, it's not more. chippy that's no for sure. no again osterman uh keeping the puck in deep I think he'll see lots of ice time here in the third period for the Huskies. That's right. Uh, trying to earn his number one standing there in the, yeah. the sun pole. Greenwood putting pressure on deck. There's Osterman. Great shot on net. Almost snuck it under Harris's arm there. Yeah. He got enough of it. To almost jammed the rebound in out the side. Yeah, a little bit of screen off of Greenwood who got knocked down by the defenseman. Awesome is going to get a a break here. I can't imagine he'll go through uh, four lines. He'll be out here real quick. Yeah. Ooh. Good scramble there. Oh, a shot from Udell from the point. He got it through. Yeah. That's Chad Harrison, the goalie for St. Paul's, covering that one up. Again, Hoylett taking the draw for the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. He was the overtime shootout hero of the semifinal over the Garden City Gophers. St. Paul's advanced to this championship final with a 3-0 win over uh, Garden Valley. With two late open net, uh, empty net goals, because it was uh, one all or one zero with uh, about 120 left in that third period. So, wow, uh, Garden Valley put up a heck of a match. See, there's an example there where this that uh, flip pass and nowhere in particular, St. Paul's comes up with it and they're on the attack again. Boy, it keeps the puck alive. Harris covers it up. Harrison. So good, Harrison. Deep, yeah, good deep penetration there by Sturgeon to earn this deep offensive faceoff. Harrison uh, came from the AAA loop, uh, played with the Warriors. Yeah, the quality of high school hockey in both the men's and women's over the last decade or so has certainly uh, increased dramatically, hasn't it, guys? Oh, yeah. Here we've got a two-on-two -two here. 
Osterman again. Yeah. Really not trying to beat his man, just trying to maybe uh, get the screenshot through his legs. Yep. Nice play there by the defenseman for Sturgeon Heights. Again. Uh, Gibbs, yeah. Three on two. Yeah. Cuts Gibbs across the up. middle. There's the rebound. Oh. oh. Gibbs just can't uh, get on to the side. Awesome is looking for it. And Harrison picks it up. So a little bit of a jam a job inside, but uh, <laughs> nothing turns to that. That was a good play by Harrison to grab hold of that. Sensing that uh, his coaches might want to change that lineup. Yeah, Sturgis comes out with a little bit of more jump here in the third period. They've had yeah. a couple of good scoring opportunities, Guy. Yeah, they got the first couple shots here. St. Paul's yet to register a shot this yeah. period. It's like the, t the ice is tilted that, yeah. that way, Grant. Yeah. Sturgeon did a good job of keeping that puck in. Oh. Sykes just missed from the slot. Yeah, he was looking uh, top glove hand on Harrison, but just missed. Puck gets dumped in here by Sturgeon. Harrison plays behind the net for his D-man. He rims it around. That's Christy Stewart coming in. Good pressure there by Sturgeon. Sykes keeps it in. Greenwood's been throwing his weight around the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, Sturgeon's trying to kind of set the tone here in the third period, being a little bit more physical with St. Paul's. They've been yeah. a little, uh, little tougher on the pucks, a little quicker. They're down one. they got to make something happen. Well, that's it. Yeah. Udall tries to get the puck in deep. I'm sure I've seen that name in the girls' loop, Udall. There goes the captain. Or that's uh, number 11 for St. Paul's. That's Owen Osterman. Wow. Great play there. Good scramble in front, and Gilbert comes up with the stop. Real nice zone entry there by Osterman for St. Paul's. Gilbert was caught off to his right side, came diving back across the net. Managed to get yeah. in front of that. So we've got Sawchuk taking the draw here against number seven. That's Matt Duncan for St. Paul's. Sturgeon comes away with the puck, rims it around. Osterman again. Sawchuk and Funk in deep. Osterman high up. Looking for the cut pass. Gibbs comes back. He's behind his net. He's going to look to advance. He loses the handle on, and he's going to have to chip it out. Jack Kayser. Circling. Kaiser's dad played for the Winnipeg Blues. And uh, later on in NCAA Division I. So, so he's got, he's got a, the hockey yeah. uh, pedigree there. Right? Yes. A few discussions with the salt and pepper shakers on the kitchen table, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. The checkerboard wasn't used for checkers. No, that's right. 15.03 left in the third period here of the Milk Provincial 4A Boys Hockey Championship. St. Paul's Crusaders up 1-0. We've got uh, a little bit of uh, student voice coming out from the Sturgeon Heights side, sitting right below our broadcast booth here. Trying to fire their team up. Yeah. And they have looked good here at the beginning of the third. Yeah, Hoylet circling around. Gibbs looking to keep that one in. Does a great job taking on the two St. Paul's players. You can definitely see why Awesome is uh, the number one in the coaches pool. Yeah. Very calm with he's the puck. On the puck a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he likes the puck on his stick, and he's uh, highly skilled. Greenwood's had a good game, as has uh, Morden. Yeah. For the hustle. He showed a lot of skill and hustle. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that. Uh, Coach Metcalf may start to look at the clock and uh, shorten the bench. I haven't noticed if he has yet, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. 
Backhand entry again. That's a situation there where Osman just doesn't have any support staff coming no. in. Hoylet was coming in, but yeah. he was uh, he was well behind him. Yeah. Udall avoids. Uh, Kevin Hoylet's dad played for the Bombers. Wow. Again, you know, these athletes they come by their athleticism. Yeah, it's kind of neat uh, to see these uh, next gen athletes and uh, what the stories are behind yeah. uh, their families for sure. Yet they'll be trying to make their own story, won't they? That's right. There's Morden. Keeps the puck along the net. Protects himself along the boards. There's a chip up. Unsuccessful. Udall keeps it up. And there goes Sawchuk. He's going to chase that one down. That's Deck's going to take that one behind the net. Circles back. There's Osterman for St. Paul's with some speed. Tied up with Gibbs along the end boards. Good play there by the defenseman. That was a nice toss out front there by Osterman. He's calling for the puck. Just missed. Kimini off the defenseman stick up off the mesh. So we'll have a Face More off. flow already this period. Yes. In the first two. Yeah, we're being treated to a pretty quality third period here, guy. Again, we'd like to thank the uh, the staff at uh, St. John's Ravens Court. They've been the uh, the conveners for this high school hockey championship under the leadership of Kevin Landerville and the athletic director Dean Wright. So we'd like to thank them for all their hard work. Osterman with a clean look there, but fired that one over the net. Osterman off the backboard, so end to end, end, -end action. <laughs> yes. It's a real blender. Yeah, they'll have uh, some interesting conversations around the extended family. Great job there by Sawchuck to clear the defenseman out of the way. Pardon me, Slychuk for the Huskies. Austin steals. Oh, that didn't miss by much. No. I like Meyer's game too. Uh, yes. What he lacks in uh, vertical stature, he makes up for in heart, that's for sure. Yeah, quick, agile. A Matthew Perot type. Yeah, Dunkalf turns that one back in. Sturgeon turns it over. Gets a shift. That one goes off the linesman. Good play there by... Sturgeon High School, oh. got a little bit of a jam job going alongside, but uh, they're able to keep it out. <laughs> Puck looked open, but the uh, referee lost sight of it, so whistle goes, so we've got a... Yeah, a big scramble there on Gilbert's yeah. right, and uh, he couldn't find it. And yeah, intentionally so not, but uh, pretty lively end boards. That one came off, and uh, it was a good thing that uh, Gilbert had his wits about him, or we'd have been uh, off him in the back of the net. So yeah. <laughs> Big hit by Greenwood on the defenseman there. Duncan turned that one back in. Had a little bit of room to uh, maybe skate that one in, but he dumped it in deep. That was uh, Greenwood. Nice move to the blue line. Excuse me. Good stop there by Deck. Deck, yeah. Greenwood. Oh. 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 There's another jam job. And a great job by Harrison yeah. coming across. Unfortunate for Greenwood, he, he, yeah. you know, he made a nice move, got in there, and then lost it. Just lost it in his feet. Up on his feet. Yeah. He had a man with him. I think that was uh, 
more than he had. Yeah. Still lots of time. We've got uh, half the third period left. We've got 10.02 on the clock. St. Paul's up. one nothing here in the 4A Milk Provincial Boys High School Hockey Championship. Gibbs tries to feed that one through after his teammate won the draw. Funk does a good job of keeping that one in. Linesman right on the blue line there. Gibbs keeps it in. Gould working the boards, trying to keep the puck alive for the Huskies. Again. Defenseman doing a good job on both sides, keeping the puck along the uh, back end with the uh, open hand. Slychuk back up the boards. Oh, oh, here we go. We've got a mishandled puck. Harrison. Oh. Big stop there. Yeah. That was Sawchuk with a solid check on number 23, Ian McDonnell. So McDonnell's plus minus on body checks is at zero right now. <laughs> he laid the first one out on Osterman uh, at the beginning of the game there. That's right. So we've got a deep offensive face-off for St. Paul's. Taking the draw is going to be number 15. That's Neil Kimini. Osterman. Great job by Gilbert with the... Right pad leg, right pad yeah. save. Harrison with the blocker. Rebound comes out front. St. Paul's gains possession. Sturgeon dumps it back in. Again, Osterman providing pressure. Good read there by Sturgeon to cut that one off back behind the net. Pack him, pass him back to Udall. Oh, Over to Gibbs. Here. Great glove save by Harrison. Face off. St. Paul's. Yeah, it's so important when that goalie can control the rebound and settle things down, you know. Yeah. St. Paul's get a chance to change things up. Uh, the Huskies were moving things around. You know, if he, he leaves that rebound out, keeps things going, it might look different. Here. They might be facing off at center. Sturgeon doing a good job of winning the faceoffs when they need it. They just need to uh, get that puck to the net. St. Paul's comes up with the puck deep in their end. They flip it out. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh wow. Great play by number 21, Jack Kaiser. Long flip pass. He picks it up on the onside, goes in one on one, and beats Gilbert. Oh, reminded oh, reminded nice. me a bit of the Jets uh, play last night. Yeah. Right? And they got that flip pass coming out of the penalty box. And yeah. Oh, Tampa up 2-1. That puts up the, the, the Crusaders up 2-0 here. Yeah. That's a huge goal. Great nice goal there pass. by Jack Kaiser. I missed who flipped that up. Did you see that, Grant? Did you see who flipped the puck up to Kaiser? No, I didn't. It's a heads-up play. He saw him cutting in yeah. behind the D. He just picked it up uh, inside the blue line. We'll definitely see some uh, even more engagement by the D-men of Sturgeon now trying to keep the uh, the pressure up. Yeah, for sure. They're going to have to take some chances down 2 nothing with 7.44 left. Yep. Meyer along the boards. He takes one just to keep the puck free for his teammate, though. Foylet moving the puck up. And looks like St. Paul's is going to go to the penalty box. A little charging call. And that hit on Meyer down in the corner. Yeah. Meyer just fit somebody up uh, shortly before that at center, and I guess St. Paul's didn't like it. And, but now they've uh, drawn the penalty. He's uh, pound for pound. He's uh, stuck his nose in it today. Oh, yeah. So full credit to him. For sure. Well, the timing couldn't have been better for uh, Sturgeon to go on a power play. They're going to need to convert this one to uh, close the gap to 2-1. They're down 2-0 here. Yeah, they need something here. Yeah. Great glove save, low side by Harrison. Yeah. Osterman uh, 
loaded up on that one. Pretty wide open shooting lane. I don't think he had a lot of traffic to contend with. So no. I think they'd probably want to be getting the puck over to Gibbs here and uh, they, they get, need to start getting traffic in front of Harrison. He's seen yeah. a lot of yeah. clean shots. Sturgeon controlling the puck. There it is. Oh. Awesome. And this high over the net. The yeah. Good cross ice pass there by Gibbs. We've got Morden deep on the blue line here for Sturgeon. St. Paul's clears the puck. Awesome picks it up. Kimini chasing. He's got the yeah. speed. Good cross ice pass. Keeps it alive. St. Paul's has done a really good job on the PK here. They've Getting had the to. pucks deep, yeah. Been shorthanded quite a few times. Husky's got another minute here. There's, a long yeah, there's the stretch pass. Doesn't look like there's a lot of legs there by Greenwood. Again, just not a five-man unit on that uh, power play. No. Lewis looking for the toe drag coming from the other side to have the uh, the bookend goal to his first one. Toilet making some great moves. Yes. Get down there, gets a nice shot off. A lot of block shots. There was another one by St. Paul's. That was Deck off of Osterman's stick. 11 seconds left in the power play. Osterman looking for the uh, one-timer off the blue line. Good hit there by Udall on Lewis, or sorry, Osterman. Oh. Owen Osterman is the St. Paul's trying to yep. make some noise here. St. Paul's have killed off another penalty. Yeah. Morden looking to cut back inside off of Van Norman, but unsuccessful. Oh, oh. Morden just missed. Yeah, I think Sturgeon's got to forget about the body. They got to get the puck to the net here. Good high blocker saved by Gilbert. Ethan Lewis keeps the puck alive. Sawchuk plays it up for the Huskies. Got to clear the zone. Now it's back on play. Just no sustained pressure by Sturgeon here. No, they, almost a little bit of panic uh, yeah. sometimes they with the puck. 4.33 here left in the third period of the Milk 4A Provincial High School Hockey Championship. St. Paul's up 2-0 over the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. Shots are 21-21. So not a ton of shots. No, a great play by Ethan Lewis on the, uh, the first goal and then uh, a great stretch flip pass to oh. uh, Jack Kaiser for yeah. the St. Paul second goal. He made uh, good being on one one on oh. Yeah. Hoylet looking to control the puck down below the goal line. Slychuk looks to cut it off. Got kind of caught in between no man's land but made the save anyways. Good job there by again Captain Ethan Lewis to get the ball, puck up the boards. I guess that was number nine. That was Paul Lysak. Jerseys are tucked in. We've got a timeout by Sturgeon here with 3.58 left. So with the Provincial High School Hockey Championship on the line, down 2 nothing, 3.58 left in the third period. What point does Coach Metcalf think about pulling Gilbert out of the net here, guy? Yeah, uh, you know, with under four minutes to go, you're down two. You, you got to make something happen. Uh, so that's something we might see here. But, you know. Still a lot they, of time. If, yeah, still a lot of time. If they were, you know, if they were getting some ozone time and, yeah. and, and possessing the puck. But, uh, you know, I think if they were to pull it early, it'd be, they'd be challenged to keep puck possession to yeah. get any kind of sustained pressure. If, that's, that's true. From what we've seen so far. Yeah. 
Yeah, this next 30 seconds is going to be kind of crucial. 30, you know, this next minute, if they can get one right, then it's a different, different game. Noah Gilbert was just checking with the coach there on uh, what point he wants to come out, so we'll keep an eye on that. But we're just under four minutes left here in the third period. A little scramble draw. St. Paul's wins it off the boards. Again, stretch pass up. Misses that, so it's going to be an icing call. Probably not the way they've drawn that up coming out of the timeout. No. Um, it's, it's a frustrating game, I think, for yeah. uh, Sturgeon right now. Uh, things just aren't clicking. No. We've advertised this as the, uh, the Milk 4A Provincial Hockey Championship, so we'd like to thank uh, Dairy Farmers of Manitoba for their continued support of high school athletics. They have been with us for a number of years now, and we're really grateful to be able to bring you these quality high school hockey championships and these experiences for our student athletes, not only in hockey, but in other sports as well. Yeah, they really do. Uh help out the uh, high school athletics and uh, appreciate the parents support. call there. No. Nope. Icing call. You got an offside. Oh, icing. Oh yeah. I'm not sure what this. St. <laughs> Paul's was looking for an interference call, which I think they may have uh, reason for. But uh, nonetheless, no call made. Sturgeons got a deep offensive face-off. Noah Gilbert's up at, between the top of the circles. Owen Austin steps in there. Yeah. St. Paul's going to have to try and keep the puck in here, and they do. Uh, Hoylett, good man to have the puck on a stick. He's back around. St. Paul's cuts him off. They're both linked up. I'm thinking they're both uh, at fault on that one, holding each other, so no call made. Oh, there's a good play there by Kimini. He's had a strong game. Yeah. Strong on the puck, good skater. Oh, linesman takes the body check <laughs> off of... Uh, Josh Humphreys. Yeah, Josh he's, Humphreys. He's going after Osterman. Yeah. Osterman stepped back and... Scored. I guess the hit statistics don't really record who you hit, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so oh, this just about does it for the Huskies. Yeah, that was uh, Greenwood. Greenwood taking, uh, I believe, an interference. So we're down into uh, 2.30 here. We've got a power play for St. Paul's. Face off deep in Sturgeon Heights zone. Shot's still 21-21. We have a yep. shot here for a few minutes. Yeah, we've got Kaiser, Christy Stewart. Out, Lewis on the D with Deck. Oh, Kaiser drops it off his stick. It goes out, out of zone. Lewis over to Deck. Back up to Lewis. He controls the puck. Flips that one in. Kaiser in on the pressure. Gilbert controls that one off the backboards. Another faceoff deep in Sturgeon's zone. Lewis comes naturally by his speed. Mother was a speed skater. Wow. So forward uh, line change here. So we've got Osterman, Kimini, and that's Matt Duncan out for St. Paul's. Nice clean win, Ethan Lewis. Whoa. Great pad save there by Gilbert. Nice little tip off of that slap pass by Lewis from the point. The deflection from the yeah. Nice little redirection. So we've got Morton on the draw versus Kameni. Scramble draw, St. Paul's comes up with it. Lewis throws it off oh. the back boards, well played by Gilbert. That was a play, yeah. know, he was looking for that bounce. Uh, that wasn't a shot wide, nope. that's for sure. And uh, Gilbert was up to the task. He's, he read that well and jumped yep. on it before it could get out front. Again, St. Paul's wins that draw, keeps the puck alive. 
They're Osterman behind the net. They're content to play the control game now. Yeah. They'd love to be on the power play for another, you know, minute and 17. Yeah, well played by Gibbs. Osterman was circling back in behind. Lewis keeps that alive, avoids the body check by Hoylett. He's going to get the return pass. Nice toe drag. Oh. That Great play by Gilbert. Very nice play offensively by Ethan Lewis, the captain. Yeah, he St. Paul's get, controlling the play here in the final moments of the uh, high school hockey championship. They dump it deep in the zone. That's Osterman for Sturgeon Creek. Again, puck comes in deep. Oh, Rob's fantastic save, save by Gilbert. That's that's a TSN yeah. highlight of the night save right there. Yeah. Owen oh, Osterman cut on, on his belly with the glove save. Yeah. Nice little acknowledgement there by number seven for St. Paul's. That's Matt Duncan gives him a little tap as he was uh, digging himself out the back of the net himself. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, acknowledging the great uh, save by Noah Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert certainly can't be faulted here if uh, the Huskies no. fall. He's, he's had a strong evening. And away goes Osman with 108. He's going to need to do and something here. Gilbert. Oh. No call. No, and Gilbert's gone to the bench, so we've got the extra man pulled. Sturgeon's got the uh, offensive face-off deep Look. in St. Paul's. They've got the six on five now, so we'll see if they can convert with one on one left. Looks like Down Austin might have been hooked as he went around the yeah. D there, trying to break to the neck. He wasn't happy. He had a few words for the ref. Nice patient play there by 29. That's Michael Tanchuk. Smart play by St. Paul's, not to ice it. Just chip it out. Osterman goes cross ice. Played by Harrison, so no icing. Oh my goodness, look at that. The clearing pass from the goal line. Goes in the yeah. open net. The only thing that's that all she wrote that here with 33 uh, seconds left. Yeah, so congratulations to so St. Paul's Crusaders for their four-time back-to-back-to-back-to-back provincial championship. So a great run by Sturgeon. Uh, I think it's pretty evident to say that uh, not having Onegi in the lineup had a, an impact on uh, the Sturgeon Heights Huskies. But uh, such is the case with sports. Uh, you know, things happen and decisions are made and you need to live with the consequences. That's right. Again, we'd like to thank the, uh, the staff from St. John's Ravens Court for a great job in convening these 4A Provincial High School Hockey Championships. And again, another shout out to the students of the broadcast media course from the LR Louis Rail School Division Arts and Tech Center. If you like the coverage, please come back on uh, next Monday night. We'll be broadcasting live from the Investors Group Athletic Center for the Varsity 4A Basketball Championships. Again, congratulations to the St. Paul's Crusaders 3-0 win over the Sturgeon Heights Huskies here in the Provincial 4A Milk Hockey Championships. Guy, it's been a pleasure having you join us tonight. We hope you enjoyed your experience. Yeah, thanks a lot, Grant. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully I can do it again sometime. So, as one... All right, so we just got uh, word from the production booth that uh, after the team shake hands, there will be uh, the championship banners and the finalist banners awarded. I'm sure there's some all-star awards, so we'll turn it over to the broadcast crew to uh, be able to cover that, so you can stay tuned in and uh, see those presentations. But uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us tonight and uh, enjoying high school coverage. And again, LRSD.TV, High School Provincial Championships, will be brought to you by or next Monday night for the 4A Basketball Championship. So on behalf of Guy Anderson, we'd like to thank you for joining us, and we'll turn our mics off. Thanks, Guy. Thank you, Grant. Have a great night, everyone.
Congratulations. Coach Harder. Coach, congratulations on your provincial championship. How does it feel to be a four-peat champion? It feels really good. I mean, it was an incredibly well-fought game. Uh, hats off to Sturgeon Heights. They had a great year. Uh, this is the first time we beat them all year, so we picked the right time. It was just a great game all around. What was your, what was your, uh, what was your main, did your main plan work this, this game, or did you have to change it up a bit? No, we, we stuck to our game plan. What got us here all year, we didn't really change much, and we just we just battled as hard as we could. All right, congratulations, Coach, again. Thank you very much. Congratulations out there. You had a great game. Uh, how does that feel? It feels unreal, especially senior year. We Not a lot of seniors left. We were a pretty young group this year, but to finish it off with these guys is pretty special. What worked for you guys out there tonight? I think from the start, we just wanted to get pucks deep, get four lines rolling, and just kind of put pressure on them all night, and I th think it worked. So. Well, great game, and congratulations. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. For the LRSC broadcasts of the Quad A hockey, Provincial Hockey Championships. Tune in next week for the Quad A Basketball Provincial Championships.